Hey folks, it's time to delve into another one, this one you all seem to be asking for. So we're going to take a look today at the Peach Guitar's top 10 SG riffs of all time, and this is going to be a good one. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, hello ladies and gents, Jack here from Peach Guitars. Welcome to another top 10. These seem to have been very, very popular so far. You may have seen on our channel that we've previously focused on Les Paul, Strats, Tellys, more recently ES series guitars. We kind of covered all the cornerstones, but the one that so many people repeatedly kept asking for, and we always kind of knew we'd have to do it at some point, was the SG. So to round out the Gibson family of products, this seems only fitting to pay a little bit of attention to the absolutely mammoth catalogue of great rock and roll riffs that were recorded on the fantastic Gibson SG. So as is usually the case with this video, let me first offer a little bit of an explanation as to what we mean by riffs, because that has a totally different meaning and interpretation to everybody. And I'm sure that by the time you've seen our list, you'll have many suggestions of your own that you feel should have been included. So let us know in the comments what those are. But as far as we're concerned, a great riff is just something that makes up the kind of full rhythmic identity of a song. It could be a hook, it could be more of a lick, but really a riff is kind of a rhythmic element that you just can't deny is the cool factor of that song. It makes the song what it is. And thankfully, when looking at the Gibson SG, there's a total plethora of great riffs to choose from, spanning all the way back to the 60s when the guitar first debuted, right up to pretty much present day. So we've got quite a hectic, very involved, very interesting list. If by the end of this video you enjoy all of our selections, be sure to leave a like down below as well. Comment down below with your thoughts, and please, if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we put up videos in the future. That would really help us out, it means a lot. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 SG riffs of all time. Now straight off the bat, here's one that's going to ruffle a few feathers. It's obvious that this player is known as a strap man. That's what he was best known for, but it's impossible to deny that recently Gibson paid a lot of attention to the fact that in his latter days of his career, he was really uh, enjoying spending time with his Gibson instruments, notably a Flying V and an SG, which they've meticulously recreated in their custom shop last year so we got to see a couple of great examples of those guitars wanted to include it just because it, he's obviously such a hugely influential figure in the guitar world and he was known to play gibsons from time to time this particular riff i don't know if, if it was originally recorded on a gibson but there were several versions live versions at least later on in his career that he was using these guitars and i've got to be honest it sounds just at home on these gibsons as it does on the strat so here it is <laughs> Okay, so there just seems to be something about Australian rock bands and SGs, doesn't there? Here's a great rocker from the mid noughties from the band Wolf Mother that I think a lot of people maybe just kind of drifted off their radar a little bit. It was 16 years ago after all, but at the time, this really reignited that sound for a lot of people. And it shows that rock and roll is totally timeless and the right com combination of a Gibson SG with a bit of rocking attitude really works. <laughs>
Okay, so here's another cat among the pigeons for you. We all know that the Beatles used a multitude of different guitars, and in fact, you'll have seen them heavily featured on our previous video where we looked at the ES series of guitars. Loads of casinos and guitars of that nature. Another notable Gibson that appeared quite often around the mid-60s period when they were recording was George Harrison's 64 SG. It's not easy to identify and verify exactly which tracks these may have been used on, but just by listening to the tones alone, this track seems to have that signature SG snarl to it, and whether it was recorded on one or not, it certainly sounds at home on a great custom shop replication. <laughs> Okay, so just to show that we're not all about the 60s and the 70s in these lists, we want to throw in this one as a little bit of a curveball and show that the SG has been used very effectively right through to pretty much present day. Darren Malakian of the band System of a Down played a bunch of great instruments throughout the course of his career, most notably Ibanez guitars. But when he picked up an SG around the mid noughties period, the band's sound took on a different direction. I think they got a little bit more complex in their songwriting and the SG and various other Gibson guitars played a huge part in that sound. So here's one of the best riffs that they ever penned, recorded on an SG. <laughs> Now, when it came to picking out SG associated guitar players, the list is quite extensive. And as we've previously set out with the disclaimer, it's all about the riffs in this video series. So one of the obvious options that sprang to my mind was Buck Dharma from the band Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult is a band with no shortage of killer riffs. So this may be one that you haven't heard before, but you probably recognize it anyway. It's one of their best. And I think it really just shows off what a fantastically musically diverse band they were. <laughs> Okay, now very high on most people's list of SG players is Mr. Pete Townsend. He was very well known for using SG specials. It's probably his best known, most iconic guitar from around 68 to 1970 or thereabouts. It was mostly used around the time that they put out the seminal, probably the greatest rock live album. Again, if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Live at Leeds, 1970. The one track that I think has its definitive version on that live album with this SG tone is this one, Young Man Blues. I really could have picked anything off Live at Leeds, various bits off Tommy as well, but this is the one that screams. Pete Townsend with an SG special. <laughs> So another one of the iconic 60s rock bands had their lead guitar player, Robbie Krieger, using a Gibson SG very frequently. Most notably, he used his 67, I believe, SG with the Batwing and the Vibrola. Very, very cool guitar, very cool, fairly underappreciated guitar player as well. He really developed some very cool and iconic licks and riffs. This one is the one that most guitar players go to when they think of the Doors. It's one of his best, and it shows off just how aggressive and mean sounding a good SG can really be. <laughs> Thank you. 
here's a riff that I think a lot of people were expecting to hear on our previous ES series video. It's not entirely certain which guitars Clapton used at which point in his uh, time with the band Cream in the 60s. It was such a short space of time, similar to Hendrix, they really packed so much great music in to just a handful of years. However, it's mostly documented that his SG, or otherwise known as The Fool, that very cool hand-painted 64, was used around this time, around uh, the Disraeli Gears album. And this is really the most iconic riff that the band ever recorded. It's also one of the greatest examples of Clapton's famous woman tone, turning the neck pickup tone almost all the way off and then switching down to the in-between position to get that trebly bite for the chorus. It's probably the most iconic Clapton riff and I'm very pleased we got to save it for this SG experience. So here we go. <laughs> Now, before we get to the top of the list, it's time, as always, for the honourable mentions. There's several great riffs here that didn't quite make the cut of the list, very diverse selections as well. So before we get to the finals, let's check out some of the riffs that didn't quite make it, but are equally phenomenal. <laughs>
Okay folks, here we are at the top of the list. Now you may have noticed I've skipped over number two. I'm gonna go straight in to number one and there's two riffs that just have to tie. There's no way of splitting these apart. Everybody knew what they were in for when they clicked on this video and most people asking to see this video as well knew what this was gonna be about. Two of the most iconic rock and metal bands of all time had guitar players that frequently, or I should say exclusively used their SGs. They relied on them to create whole new diverse types of music. In some cases, basically creating an entire genre of music, all thanks to the SG. So, vying for first place, we're gonna let you decide in the comments. Let me know which you think is the most important and the most kind of signature SG sound. But we've got the great Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath and Angus Young of ACDC. These are two of the greatest guitarists of all time. Let's delve into them.
Okay, folks, so thank you very much, as always, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the list. Like I said before, I'd like to know your thoughts, what you think should have been included, shouldn't have been included, whether you think we got this totally wrong, whether you think we were dead on, whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below what your choices for your top 10 SG riffs of all time would be. And if you haven't seen them already, there's plenty of other stuff to dig into on our channel. If you'd like any more information about any of the guitars or any of the gear that I've used in this video today, click the link in the description down below. We'll link off to all the guitars that I've used. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. Take good care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.